is hell. When William Sherman immortalized those words, he was referring to the American Civil War. As hellish as it no doubt was, one wonders what words he would have used to describe the trenches of World War I if only he'd lived to see them. I think we all know that game developers like to take a few liberties when they set action games in the midst of war, but the truth is, if a game based in wartime is going to have any sense of realism, it's going to be a horror game. And there is something indescribably refreshing about playing a horror game that isn't supernatural. Games require a non-stop barrage of challenges for the player to come up against, and usually you need to have a suspension of disbelief to take them seriously, but not here. Almost unlimited enemies who want to smash your head in, random artillery strikes or waves of deadly gas, flickering lights, slaughtered brethren, and ominous sounds echoing from every which way? Welcome to the trenches of World War I. Conscript is dubbed as a survival horror game inspired by classics of the genre. Set in 1916 during the Great War, it blends classic mechanics into a tense, satisfying, and actually pretty unique experience. You play as a French soldier who's trying to fight the good fight while simultaneously searching for his brother who was wounded in action and has gone missing. As you navigate the trenches, you do battle with a variety of enemy types with unique attacks or defenses, follow orders from random superiors, overcome obstacles which serve as the game's puzzle-solving element, and find or trade for ever-improved weaponry and equipment. The more I played, the more I found myself really invested in the experience. I mean, if you pluck any survivor from World War I and tell their story, there's a good chance it would play out like an action game, albeit a pretty hellish one. The average soldier's plight in World War I was no trivial thing, and it famously traumatized men until they found peace on their deathbeds. So while the game succeeds in making the action satisfying, and your unfolding adventure exciting, it certainly doesn't fail to imprint the savagery of your circumstances upon you. As you traverse the claustrophobic corridors and burning swamps that make up the Battle of Verdun, you'll find yourself far more immersed in the world than you initially might have expected. Now, I know it's not for everyone, but I personally love the visuals. You don't need a high resolution to paint a believable picture, especially not when most imagery we've come to know of this period is faded or blurred anyway. But moreover, while the graphics might initially appear relatively simplistic, once you start to soak up the ever-changing environments or perform actions that trigger animations, you'll start to realize that the visuals aren't nearly as simple as you might have thought. Just look at the way he draws his pistol when you hold the aim button. It's so cool. And when you match that to the audio, the immersion really starts to kick in. The background sounds range from howling wind to shelling and gunfire to trickling water, depending on where you are. And if ominous sounds aren't seeping into your ears, subtle but very effective background music follows you most places you go, with gentle strings and piano chords in the minor key setting the mood. I think it's safe to say that influence was taken from the original Resident Evil series when designing the audio ambience. The sound effects are just as good as the music with satisfying and meaty strikes. Chilling and distorted battle cries from the enemies. and foley noises such as footsteps constantly changing as you pass over different types of terrain that further establishes that immersion. Now the action is simple and effective. You can equip up to four weapons via your hotkeys and they'll either be a melee weapon with a durability indicator or a ranged weapon that relies on ammo. The game doesn't stray from the popular template design with sprinting, rolling and swinging your weapons all draining the bar. This is actually a good thing as the learning curve is almost non-existent, meaning you can jump right in without much fuss. Each enemy will challenge you in a different way. For instance, one in particular can kick you as you wind up an attack, meaning you need to time the wind up as much as you do the swing. And enemies with a rifle will step back, making it very difficult to hit them with a melee weapon if you don't catch them off guard. And so as the game progresses and new enemies enter the scene, so too does the complexity, as one might hope. But at its core, it's a dodge and strike system. The firearms are much the same, with an aiming reticule that shrinks down as you aim. But one added complexity that I really loved, and of course is only viable due to the time period of the game, is having to rack some weapons to eject the empty shell after each shot. That means as effective as your rifle may be, you need to spend that much more time preparing it while dodging enemy strikes before you can let off another shot. Often you'll find yourself rolling into the perfect position, taking aim and seeing the dreaded red reticule as you realize that you need to load a fresh round into the chamber. In another welcome tribute to the Resident Evil franchise, you'll find safe rooms dotted around the map, complete with a special chest that allows for offloading of items that can then be pulled from another box in another room, as well as a tired old soldier who trades in cigarettes, the game's currency, for consumables and gun parts that can be used to upgrade your weapons. 
And while this might be a slight departure from realism, I don't know anybody who doesn't love a bit of upgrading action. And the system of the game provides enough decent upgrades that even in the two hour playtime you'll see clear improvements to whichever weapon or weapons you might choose to sink your points into. The room also features a journal where you may or may not be able to save your game depending on your choice of game style. Conscript offers a variety of difficulties, not just through the traditional route, but also by disabling checkpoints and limitless saves from the outset. As downright realistic as no saves might be, I personally suffer from an acute sense of gamer rage when expected to start the entire game again from scratch, and so personally, I found that the checkpoint system was a nice balance. But it's awesome that the punishing route is not just offered, but actively encouraged considering how many masochists exist in today's gaming community. Overall, this is an exciting and currently free two-hour experience that doesn't require an ending to be extremely fun to play. The replayability is also quite high considering the number of weapons you find in the run as well. I look forward to when the game is released, so I might review it beginning to end, but for now, I can't encourage everybody enough to head over to the Steam page, download it, and experience a bit of World War I trauma for yourself. Link in the description. Thank you as always for listening. Like or subscribe can actually be pretty life-changing for me, so if you can find it in you to click that little button, I would be eternally grateful. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself and see you next time.